Morning everyone, welcome to Buzzbridge and Hambledon Church Online. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here. Just to let you know by way of updates that in the near future we hope to be live streaming uh, and in the meantime this online YouTube service will be continuing. We have also opened the church at 9am for worship on Sundays uh, and that will be going continuing for the next few weeks. So Either way, when we get to live stream, there will be an online service as well as the opportunity to gather in the church uh, physically at 9am on Sundays um, for those who are able to join us. So uh, yeah, thank you for being patient and uh, we look forward to seeing you either online or in the church in due course. This morning we are going to start our worship with that wonderful song, Amazing Grace. Thank you. 
Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray, and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts and we have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We say together the Venite, Psalm 95. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God 
and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is the people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Jubilate Deo, Psalm 100. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into the, his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth for ever. Generation to generation, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we all say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father, Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O God, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. A collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace, and the lover of concord, in the knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, 
whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in thy defence may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Grace O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the Queen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all thy dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee thy favour, to behold our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endure her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading today is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on your shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour no good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed are those who trust in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So how and where are you in God's presence? Our psalm today, Psalm 84, is often used in services to dedicate church buildings, or perhaps on the anniversary of such dedications, as it refers to the temple in Jerusalem and mentions courts, altar, house, and so on. And the psalm describes a literal, physical journey to the temple, perhaps for a festival. It's a song to sing or chant on the way and be an encouragement in anticipation until you get there. And then you finally see the temple up on the hill 
and you can at last enter his courts with praise. That is one way of reading the psalm, but there's also another way of reading it. As we know, many of the psalms were written when the Jewish people were in exile. So it can also be read as a lament, sung or said by someone far away from the temple. Maybe someone who sat down by the waters of Babylon and wept, just longing to be there and someone who knows it isn't going to happen anytime soon. So yes, the psalm refers to a specific place, the temple, but I think it also has a much wider reference and refers to an intense longing for God's presence. Verse two says, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Which brings us back to my question, how and where do you find yourself in God's presence? How do we practice the presence of God? Now for some, this will be going to, to a place of worship, a church, a school, a hall, but we can also go to a place in our homes, a particular room, a chair, a desk, or in the bath, or you could find God's presence outside in the garden, or it could be while you're walking, running, cycling, traveling, commuting. It could be reading, listening to a podcast, in silence or singing. You know the places where you feel closer to God than others. And you know what you find helpful to draw you into the presence of God, putting yourself in a particular place, physically or mentally. So finding God's presence often involves two things, a sense of place and some kind of journey. And these two go together because of course, the whole thing about a journey or perhaps a pilgrimage is that you are going to a place, a special place. You're not just aimlessly wandering around. And we see this combination of place and journey in the psalm. The word blessed is used three times, two of which are very close together in verses four and five. It says, blessed are those who dwell in your house. And in the next verse, blessed are those whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. So place and journey. So maybe deliberately taking yourself to a different space or zone, whether that's to a building or a chair and stopping in that place for a while is a good way to practice the presence of God. Now, most of the time we have quite a wide choice about how we do this. It could be inside, outside, to be quiet or noisy, to be at home or in church. Well, that is until last March when our choices were severely curtailed. Now, I'm used to going to church, making that transition from home to church. And I found it so frustrating being at home on a Sunday morning. I could look out of the window and see sparrows and maybe then swallows flying freely while I was stuck inside. And I hadn't realized how much actually going to church physically moving provided me with an opportunity to put myself in a better place physically and spiritually to engage with God. I found it really hard to recreate that sense of God's presence. I think making what after all is a very short journey from the kitchen to my computer screen, probably with a cup of coffee, didn't provide me with the discipline to look for God's presence. So this made me think, do I rely too much on something being provided for me? Have I become more passive than active, actively engaged? I think I did become a lot more sort of passive, almost expecting God to come to me, rather than me making an effort to come to God, more of a passive recipient or spectator, observer. And I was really not like the psalmist here. I can't say my soul was yearning, fainting for the Lord. And I don't think my heart and flesh were crying out for the living God as I sat in front of the PC. So obviously that's a lesson for me. And maybe we've all been a bit shaken up 
shaken awake as to how we approach and worship. Another thing most of us have found so hard is not meeting together and talking to another real live person. And of course, in terms of entering God's presence, we're not doing this corporately together with others. And we still find that hard. So the heart of the message of this psalm is being deliberate in seeking God's presence. It's something we have to choose to do. Now, we may not have a choice to go somewhere physically different, but we do have a mental and spiritual choice about that decision. Have you seen those car stickers which say, I'd rather be, I'd rather be fishing, I'd rather be surfing, I'd rather be drinking tea. But how about one saying, I'd rather be at church, or I'd rather be in God's presence. And the psalm says in a very well-known verse, I would rather be a doorkeeper, or the message version says scrub floors. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I would rather be in God's presence than, well, in some den of iniquity. And to be honest, that seems like a fairly obvious choice, you know, God or iniquity. And it's a stark contrast, which is typical of the Psalms. Here's your choice life or death, God or iniquity. And choosing God provides us with the overarching context within which we make lots of everyday decisions. And we're constantly making choices. Every day we make choices about our attitudes, what we do, how we live, how we treat others. And we may feel our choices have been constrained but in fact, we are continually making choices about how we engage with what is happening around us. And maybe the pandemic has taught us something about the nature and consequences of various choices. I think it's also taught us that despite all our efforts, we are vulnerable, vulnerable to suffering. We are not in control. But within that vulnerability, we still have a choice to make as to how we're going to respond. And if the psalm is read as a psalm of lament, it reflects an understanding that God is in a place where such anguish can be taken. The psalm doesn't exactly say what you should do, do this rather than that, but it says that God will bestow favour and honour and good things on those whose life is blameless. So the question, how and where are you in God's presence? Setting your heart on pilgrimage or dwelling in God's house? We have to make deliberate choices in practicing the presence of God because otherwise it just isn't going to happen. But you are here you have chosen to engage with God through this service online, and that's great. So be encouraged. We trust in the goodness, the love, and the reign of our God. And I said earlier that the word blessed was used three times in this psalm, and it finishes with the third time, and I'll finish with that too. It says, Lord Almighty, Blessed are those who trust in you. Blessed are those who trust in you. Amen.
Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The final blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those for whom you pray, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.